Yeah, nothing changes and nothing changes, man. You know, we'll sit around forever wondering, well, what if I, you know, what if I was a dog catcher? Would I be the best? What if I was a, you know? Every day we change the world. But to change the world in a way that means anything, that takes more time than most people have. It never happens all at once. It's slow. It's methodical. It's exhausting. We don't all have the stomach for it. What if it's a mistake? It's a mistake. Rest assured. What do you know? You're going to stumble around, right? And what's going to happen is this. You're going to move. To, you're going to not stay in stasis. You're not going to wander around in circles. And I see people like that. They said, well, I never knew what to do, and now I'm 40. It's like, that's not so good. That's not so good. And you might say, well, and there is a literature, too, that suggests that people are a lot more unhappy when they look back on their lives about the things they didn't do than they are about the mistakes they made while they were doing things. It's how they get you to give up. They say it's not that simple, Vinny. So what's the truth? That it is. I want people to understand that they're not alone, that there are other people feeling exactly the way they're feeling, that their behavior is not insane, that they have a disease, and it's not their fault. There's a very famous kind of line that people don't change. I happen to know that people do change, and I see that every day. I see people getting better. I see the lights in their eyes come on. There's a million excuses I could make to rationalize not getting up early, doing the ice bath and going for a run. There comes a time when all these potential excuses turn into fuel that motivates you to keep going. You gotta get out there. You gotta give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures, because remember this, you will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say, what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong, that I could fix, that I would fix? You meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want, but it'll be the necessary one. It's a whole issue. People have a feeling that they can change, but they have no effort they don't want to get in the game because they feel it's, you know, it's just too much time and it doesn't work and I tried it and it didn't work and then they give up and then life just goes on. It's seamless. You, you don't see it. It's just the way you've been living. And my older brother, who was 12, got into an electrical accident and he died in my arms. And really come to terms with that I was the one who got to live. That this life that we live, it's a privilege. And when I really started to take that in, I felt this tremendous urge to do something with my life, to do something that mattered. At some point, everything's gonna go south on you. Everything's gonna go south and you're gonna say, this is it. This is how I end. Now you can either accept that or you can get to work. You can't stop. You can't quit. You can't say, I'm a failure. You're not a failure. You're not. You're a wonderful, strong, intelligent youngster. Take advantage of that. Trust in God. Trust in yourself. Until you say, yeah, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm going to take action. Nothing changes if nothing changes, man. And I'm not preaching at you. I'm just, uh, I just want to remind you because, you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life sitting around wanting things to change. Um, and not being able to make them change and, and not thinking I could. And I wish somebody had told me that earlier sometimes. That in order for something to change, there needs to be change. You cannot stand still because the world moves away from you if you stand still. And there's no stasis. There's only backwards. And so if you're not moving forwards, then you're moving backwards. How much harder will you work in this offseason now to get back to the championship? I'll push myself to exhaustion. Toby, we thank you for your time. All right.
I just I feel like we sort of focus on right ways and wrong ways too much, and um, I think it's in a sense sort of scary to just be born and live life. And and I, I understand the the idea of kind of grasping onto um, a particular thought of wanting to kind of feel like you somehow have a handle on the unknown. But you know what? The unknown is is the unknown. <laughs> Every time you have changed, you feel pain. You stepped out of one relationship to another and you feel pain. You leave one neighborhood to another and you feel pain. You go from one job to another and you feel the fire of transition. See change as growth. See change as transformation. See change as evolution. See change as necessary. See change as critical. See change as inevitable. Do something. Stop being f***ing scared if you have not jumped on the bandwagon of doing exactly what the f*** you want to do, which is skiing for the next three years or working at a job that's not what your parents want or what society wants. Do something. Stop being f***ing scared. And so enough. Enough parents, the kid that's sitting right now at a desk and saw this in a feed and you hate your f***ing job. Enough. Stand up. Get the out of here and do you live your life you got one life and so if you're not willing to be a fool then you'll never start anything new and if you never start anything new then you won't develop and so the willingness to be a fool is the precursor to transformation and that's the same as humility and so if you're going to write your destiny you can do a bad first job you're going to get smarter as you move forward when you can learn to do things when you don't want to when you don't feel like it when you're tired, when you can learn to push yourself to do them, that's when the world opens up to you. That's when success knocks at your door. There will never come a time when you can just happily coast through life. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. What I am telling you to do is chase after that version of yourself that you know you could be. What happens when I decide for myself that I'm going to do something different? You've got the gift of life. You have the privilege of being here. Quit playing small. You were meant to do great things. Nothing changes if nothing changes, man. Be the guy who embraces the ugly, the miserable. Uh, be the guy who embraces hard work, the grind. Don't be afraid of being hurt. Don't be afraid of sacrificing some blood. It's the moments in life, the decisions you make on a, on, a, on a moment to moment basis that add up to be the guy or not the guy. Tonight, I did something, you know, that I feel more of a guy for me, who I am, my guy. Make the hard decisions, make the sacrifices, make the unpopular decisions, and become comfortable in your own skin. And if you are not a person that you are comfortable being alone with, that is the one person in this universe that you have full power, full right, and full responsibility to change. If you had to create a human, what would you put them through to make them tough? It probably wouldn't be a really chill life. What would you put them through to make them patient? You probably wouldn't give them things immediately. And so it's like we want these traits but each of the traits has a price tag attached to it. It's just like, do you want to pay the price tag to get the thing? And so I think if, if people reframe the, the, the period of life that they're going through as the price that they're paying out of their wallet, but the wallet is their time, it's the seconds of life that they're trading for it, then I think more people would be willing to make the trade. Because at least when I look at myself, like when I'm 80 something years old and I'm looking back at my life, I want to have these traits. But in order to have those traits, I know I have to go through these things. And I think for me, that's given me a lot of comfort in hard times. Right now in life, your family is looking for that one guy right now. They're looking for that one guy who's strong, who's that pillar for the family in hard times. Make sure they look around, they look around and find you. These are the times right now for you to step up. 
Be that guy that can take anything. Stay hard. The biggest regret of the dying is never becoming your ideal self. I do believe that we're thrust in a world that we don't fit in. And I believe the journey is that a lot of people sell you a bill of goods along the way. That if you get some awards, you mean something. You go to a certain school, you got it. You're cute, classical beauty. You got the right man, you got the right zip code. And you swim through all that filthy swill until you come to the really, really stark conclusion that I want to leave this earth becoming who I know deep within I, I am supposed to be. The next time you want to just give in to that desire for comfort, remember that your future self is going to be the one to suffer the consequences. It's so easy to just put it off and act like it doesn't exist. But that future self that you're passing all these burdens to will one day be yourself of the present. And you'll wish you chose to do otherwise. Everything that you do counts. The biggest mistake that people make is they think that only what they want to count counts. No. And when you read a book, when you listen to an audio program, when you go to a course, when you go to bed early and get up early and you work, it all counts. Never f***ing apologize for being yourself. If people don't like how you act, how you look, how you speak, that just means those aren't your f***ing people. Don't change who you are to match your surroundings. Pick better f***ing surroundings and be yourself. Yeah, I don't know, most men would understand that when a man cries and he's whimpering, he's hurting. You know, because I've been there. And there's no shame in crying, gentlemen. Men, <laughs> it's okay to cry. We can still be a man, but you're also human. And it does show a little bit of your vulnerability. Do it for your loved ones. Do it for your wife. Do it for your husband. Do it for your children. Do it for generations to come. Come on, after you're dead and gone, what will they say about what you did? Yes, there's so many people depending on you, but it's got to start with you and the man upstairs. If you want to be great, oh man, prepare to get up off that mat. You're going to get knocked down over over and over and even when you feel like no nobody it, I can't be hit this hard or if you're down there thinking there's no way I can get up from this that's when you're just starting for some strange reason this world wants to see you water down the reality of who you are our society wants to see you think like everyone else and feel just like those around you Maybe for somebody who's so distracted from their true desires as a person, that doesn't sound so bad. But the pain of seeing through limitation and full absence of distractions is almost unbearable. You see, it hurts because the resistance wants you to give in and mold to what's expected of you. And if I can provide some advice, don't. I don't know where you are in your game of life. You may be in your third quarter. You may be in your fourth quarter. Come on, you're not going to live forever. Not in this world. Come on. You may be in your first quarter, your, your second half. And this time it's got to be personal. See, last time you were just running through the plays. Last time you were just running the songs that you rehearsed in rehearsal. Last time you were just going through the motions and you got numb. Come on, and you got tired and weary. And now you're broken and bitter and angry because you lost. And I'm just wondering if you're courageous enough, bold enough, if you have enough faith. Come on, if you have enough inside of you, resilience, to come back to the scene. This life is relentless. You better keep coming back from all your failures. All your doubts, all your shit. You better keep fighting, keep getting up. Never fucking lay down for shit. That's one thing we should all agree on. If you've been broken once, you know how that shit feels. That means fucking try and break me again. You got a lot of people playing their hard earned money to come watch you perform. 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 It's your job to be in shape, it's your job to be strong enough to perform at that level every single night. And as a competitor, I'm not, I'm not ducking and 
Like it's not, oh my God, my back hurts, I'm sore. We got to play Vince Carter and Toronto Raptors tonight. Pick your mountain, mm. whatever that mountain is. And each journey up the mountain is a million steps. And each day you have to take that step. Yeah. Each day you take that step, you look up at the mountain, you say, that's where I want to go. Mm. And then each next day you take your step over and over and over again. Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything. Everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. Let yourself go. Fall free into it. Step into it. You are worthy. You are an unrepeatable miracle and there is none like you in all the earth. There will never be another you. Your DNA, your fingerprint. Come on. Your gait, your presence, your authenticity. Come on. You're special. You're special and you're necessary. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. People say you can't do that. You can do anything. We are God's highest form of creation. There is nothing on the planet that will equal us. Every bad thing that has ever happened to you is your fault. Now I use the word fault to shake people up that you are never, ever, ever, ever a victim unless you choose to be. Everything in your life will change. You're always in control. And a man, a man provides. If you don't protect what belongs to you, then sooner or later it belongs to someone else. It goes for your land, your wallet, your home, your country, everything. It is your job as a man to protect it. The story of the whole goddamn world. You don't hate yourself. You don't think you suck. You're not the imposter. You're not insecure. Somebody taught you that. 2008, we had the third consecutive failure of the Falcon rocket for SpaceX. Um, Tesla almost went bankrupt, we, we closed our financing round 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, 2008. It was the last hour of the last day that it was possible. We would have gone bankrupt two days after Christmas and demise. And I got divorced, that was like rough. If, if things had just gone a little bit the other way, it, both companies would be dead. The reason there's gonna be a billion motivational views today on YouTube is that people love the feeling of being motivated. They don't like putting in the work to do something about the feeling. For 10 years, I heard every person I know making fun of me. I heard every person I know telling me it was a, that, that I was wasting my time. I heard every, I've had every I know when I tell them what we're gonna do, and by the way, we've done it by now, laugh at my face. And I'm sure you guys can relate to that. You know, very few people bet on the underdog, mm -hmm. but if you would have, you would have won big, and that happened to be we, us. We bet on the, on, on ourselves. Work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And then a lot of work. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Do you think Elon Musk has work-life balance? No. Do you think Steve Jobs, when he was alive, had work-life balance? No. Do you think Bill Gates? No. Henry Ford? No. Original Heineken? No. So if none of those people that created the wealth of the world had work-life balance, why do you think you're going to have it? Why? Because you deserve it? I don't think so. You deserve what you get in life by working hard. I'll say this again, but like sometimes you have to let other people's dreams for your life die, for yours to live. At the end of the day, only execution matters. So if you have big dreams, if you have goals, something that you're trying to accomplish in your life, you're going to have to execute against that. If you're willing to pay the price and you're willing to do the work and you're willing to take the time 
and you're willing to consistently get up when you are knocked down over and over and over again, which is going to happen to you if you're pursuing anything outside of the norm, you can make it here in America. When you have passion around something that you are squeezing every last bit of the juice out of the orange, right? To me, hustle is maximizing the energy you're putting into somebody. I'm blown away by people saying that they're hustling and they want to achieve these great things and then their actions don't match. It's like saying you really want to lose weight while eating a Big Mac, right? So to me, hustle would be putting all your effort into achieving the goal at hand. And for me, that means making every minute count. I hate any entrepreneur that is like, you know, sad. <laughs> like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's always hard. Like, it's always gonna be hard. It's hard when it's a bubble because everything's $150,000 for a $40,000 worker, right? It's hard when it blows because there's no money and nobody's buying and nobody's believing. It's always hard. Sometimes you have to let other people's dreams for your life die, for yours to live. And for me, it was like when I, when I continued to every day not want to wake up, that was my wake up call where I was like, either I continue to live this way and not want to be alive or I just risk the fact that I'll die to everybody else. And I think that that like, it was the hardest decision of my entire life by far. All this, all the hard stuff we went through, still the hardest decision. Full forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. My truth and my experience has been, I have to jump higher, I have to show up earlier, I have to be the first person to turn off the light and the last person to turn off the light. I have to make sure that every number is correct and every T is crossed and every die is audit, dotted. The way that I show up is by being consistent, so consistent that people cannot doubt your capacity to succeed. You have to work harder than the average person and if you accept those terms, you cannot complain about those terms. I have only known success on the back of consistency. Do I think you could be a success without being consistent? Perhaps if you have other resources and tools that I was never given, but coming from where I am, my perspective has only been consistency and the discipline has been everything that I have ever gotten on the back of doing it again and again and again. It is what I teach. It is what I preach is what I believe. Play it out. What if you just never do anything? Is the, like maybe some people just need to stop dreaming. Maybe they need to accept their current reality and actually enjoy it. Because there's a lot of people when they're 70 and 80 and they didn't do their dreams. And if they went back, like they didn't do anything, but that whole time they were dissatisfied because they didn't try. But what if they were just like, I have a good life. I have a wife who loves me. I've got some kids. I have a job that I, you know, like I don't mind it, pays the bills. I mean, if you go back 500 years, it wasn't people like, man, this is my passion. He's like, dude, I'm just rowing, <laughs> rowing a boat across a ferry. And that's what I do. And that's what my dad did. And his dad did like, this is how we eat. And so like, we have these, these um, idealized versions of purpose that I think Instagram and all this stuff kind of make terrible. But like, I think there's a lot of honor and work period. And I think a lot of people uh, fool themselves by thinking that what they do for some reason is not honorable. And I think a lot of it is like the internal versus external scorecard of like, I was saying what I said earlier about like, I believe these things to be true about the universe or like the world. But a lot of those are like, what do I believe about myself? Which is like, I can choose to do work in this way, which then I can derive joy from. So like, if I'm shoveling, I can choose to be like, I will be the best shoveler because I believe that I will figure out how to do this more efficiently. And I will, you know, I will, I will get better and I'll have calluses on my hands and I'll have a better back and whatever. Um, but I will do this well. And I think you can find joy in work if you decide to do it. So on one hand, if you are, if you, if you are, if your dream causes you so much pain, then you will quit what you're doing and do it. And if it doesn't cause you enough pain that you're not pursuing it or that you don't like, if you don't feel like you're in a cage right now, then maybe you're not in a cage and maybe you just need to like the life you have. And that's cool too. But do you have the guts to fail? 
Here's my second point about failure. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. My wife told me this great expression. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Les Brown's a motivational speaker. He made an analogy about this. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? Having these setbacks where I can't even run a mile, but I'm thinking about running 135. I can't run one mile, and what if I can win it? Wake up! Stop sleeping on yourself! The biggest problem that you have had is not that you don't have resources. It's not that you don't have supporters. It's not that somebody doesn't believe in you. It's that you have not believed in you. Stop sleeping on yourself. Step into your authenticity. Step into your intelligence and your brilliance. Release your gift. God has given you something great. Release it. It's a mental standard you must meet in life. Motivation has an expiration date. And when motivation dies, discipline must take its place. Pick something rather than nothing, or pick something rather than all things, and then set yourself to master that. You need to have a primary discipline. It's absolutely necessary to succeed in life. Now, once you have a primary discipline, then you can branch out and, and become a multiplicity in your disciplined approach and then you're absolutely bloody unstoppable but you really need that initial disciplinary routine it's that having a discipline every day to say for me to learn this one math problem it's gonna take me 10 hours how bad do you want to get to that next level what are you willing to do what are you willing to sacrifice what are you willing to give up who are you willing to let go to get where it is that you want to be there is a bridge from what you see in your head to what you hold in your hand. And that bridge is called discipline. What people understand is that they live for themselves, not knowing that you have the power within yourself to change millions of lives yeah. by facing life, by facing yourself. Nobody wants to put in the work. Nobody wants to let go of every single distraction. Here is my question. Can you learn how to say no to what's hurting you? No to what's stopping you? No to what's hindering you? No to the people that don't believe in you? I now know that there is no cap on the human mind. There's no cap. We cap it ourselves. Life is one big mind game. And you're playing it with yourself. You are the issue. It's you. Your issue is you. Nobody has lied to you more than you. My biggest fear in life is if there is a final resting place in this world and there's a final judgment and you talk to something much bigger than you. I don't want to sit down and have a conversation with someone with something that says, you're in heaven, this is what you should have been on earth. And are you really in heaven now or are you in hell? It also makes you disciplined, and once you're disciplined, like you're, you're like a sharpened sword, man, like a well-tempered blade, and then you can go out there and operate in the world. So, and if you haven't found your passion, then I would say, well, don't wait around till you find the damn thing, because you may never find it, is pick something and focus on it, you know, and if you move strongly and forthrightly towards it for a number of months at least, or even a number of years, and then you find, well, that wasn't the thing for you, it isn't gonna be a waste anyways, because most of the time, the pursuit of any disciplined knowledge pays off even if it doesn't pay off in the way that you initially expect. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. So when something hard would happen to these kids, like in Hell Week, it would draw on 
something that made them very insecure. And they look for comfort. Whenever hardness comes, and you don't know what it is, it may be different for you than it is for me, but you go back to your insecurities. And then when you go back to your insecurities, you then look for comfort within those insecurities. And we all look for that cookie that your mom used to give you right. when you were sad, yeah. when you were sick. We look for our wife or our husband. We look for comfort. It's in those moments you must retrain your mind mm. to think differently in hell. Discipline is found in our daily routine, our daily rituals. You may use discipline on occasion, but you're not disciplined. And there's a difference between having discipline and being disciplined. When you have discipline, you're selective. When you have discipline, you're conditional. It depends on how you feel. When you are disciplined, how you do anything is how you do everything. And everything you do, you show up at a thousand percent. Everything you do, you execute with a spirit of excellence. That's what discipline looks like. I used to speak in hollow words. I don't do it anymore. Everything that comes out of my mouth has substance. It's real. And... We all have these feelings in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls. I act on mine. A lot of us who are afraid of something, we allow our minds to choose the path of least resistance so we go a different route. When I'm afraid of something, it's telling me you must do this that. thing. You must do that. Yeah. You have to go that way. And most of us don't understand that mentality. We go left and we wonder why we haven't fulfilled something in our lives. People tell me all the time, it's hard to get wealthy. It's hard to grind. It's hard to be focused. It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay broke. It's hard to stay depressed. It's hard to stay governed by anxiety. It's hard to be inconsistent. It's hard not to have daily disciplines. It's hard not to believe in yourself. It's hard to be broke. It's hard to be poor. It's hard. It's all hard. So choose your heart. You either go work for it, you're gonna sit there and let life knock you down and dare you to get back up. And no one saved me. It wasn't like someone came down here and guided me through life. When you figure this out on your own, the amount of pride and dignity and self-respect you have, that's why I walk around the streets with a backpack <laughs> and just like, I don't need anything else. Yeah. You figure it out by going inside yourself, by callousing over the victim's mentality. You're always a victim. Even if you have everything in life, until you realize what you've achieved. One thing I got to tell all of you listening is you got to kill the blame game. Stop blaming it on the person that walked out on you. Stop blaming it on the person that overlooked you. Stop blaming it on the person that undervalued you. Stop blaming it on the person that did not promote you, that did not see it, that did not believe it. Stop blaming everybody and look yourself in the mirror. And the thing you got to ask yourself is, Am I going to repeat my history or will I blaze a new trail? We live in a box and we don't want to go outside that box at all, ever. Outside that box is all these possibilities of life. What we do is we shackle our mind. We are a prisoner in our own mind that this is all I can do. This is all I'm good at. And we... We, we take away the possibilities of you could be this, you could be that, yeah. you could be all these things. Mm -hmm. And I never thought at 300 pounds I could be Navy SEAL. Wow. So if my mind was shackled, me and you would never meet. There'd be no book. Right. There'd be no book. Right. There'd be nothing. If I were to give you one last piece of advice in order to understand discipline, discipline is revealed in our daily routines and rituals. Discipline unfolds. If you want your future, you have to cross the bridge of discipline. If you want to get out of the room of ordinary, you have to go through the door of discipline. If you want to dig yourself out of murky, muddy water, if you want to claw your way to the top, you are going to have to climb the wall of discipline. There is no other way. I need you to tell yourself right now, there is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. The future belongs to the discipline.